So we've got the setup for our saving and loading of our uh, visual novel files now. This allows us to take the current state of our visual novel, including the progress and everything on screen, and save it all inside of a single file on the computer. This can be reloaded at any time so a player can recall their state when they decide to restart the game at a later time. And we've done this by saving everything with that very usable JSON file format, or JSON string format, I should say. Problem is, JSON is it's very human readable, but it's also human editable. So you could open up this file and you could literally change anything. We could change the main character from Avira to anything else. And we could change anything like our progress, even the active conversations and the things on screen. We could unlock things if we were saving progress in here, and that is not something we want to be able to do. So to secure this, what we will implement is an encryption system. More specifically, we'll be implementing a very fast and very simple encryption system that will be very suitable for our visual novel. As the player is playing the visual novel, whenever they go to load the game, you don't want it to have a long load time. And though there are some very secure encryption standards out there, and they'd be pretty quick with our files, we don't want any sort of delay. We want it to be as fast as possible. And for a visual novel, you don't need that much security. You just want something to make to discourage people from trying to edit the files. Bottom line is, if someone has the application on their computer, they have the files, if it's encrypted, they can can hack it. It's only a matter of time. Uh, we see this all the time with modders and, and different things. You can only secure things so much. So let's go for performance and let's go for just preventing people from going in and just changing stuff. The way we'll do this is by using the very fast encryption method called XOR. XOR encryption is a very fast bitwise and symmetrical encryption that uses the same key to encrypt the data that it uses to decrypt. So all we have to do is define one key and then use this for both saving and loading our files and we can secure them pretty well. So let's go to our core scripts inside of the IO folder and let's open up the file manager. In order for us to go ahead and do this, we need a key and we need to tell the system whether we want to encrypt and decrypt the file that we're saving or loading. So let's come up to the very top of the file manager and let's define our key with a, uh, let's make it a private constant string and this will be our key. So I'm going to set mine to This key will be used to encrypt and decrypt the files. So let's add another parameter to our save and load functions for a boolean called encrypt, which by default will equal false, as we may not encrypt every file that we might save, but definitely for the certain file types like the visual novel save file. Let's also add this to load. So a bool encrypt equals false, and there we are, we are on our way. So the first thing we need to do is instead of writing a string directly to our file, we're not going to use the stream writer, instead we're going to write bytes. So that way, as we use this XOR operator, we can run the operation on the bytes, and then we can write them directly to file. So let's start by saving. So let's go ahead and say that if we are encrypting, we're going to go ahead and just change the bytes of this JSON data. But to do that, we need to get the bytes of the JSON data. We can do that easily by creating a new array for our bytes called data bytes. And this is going to be equal to encoding.utf8.getBytes, followed by what it is we're trying to convert into the byte array. So we can do the same thing for our key, and we'll go ahead and get the key bytes as well, and just pass in the key that we've defined above. So now we have the data, and we have the key that we're going to run the XOR with. So to run this operation, let's make another function that's going to return a byte array for the encrypted or decrypted data, depending on what we're doing. So let's make this a private byte array returning function called XOR. And what we're going to take in is we're going to take a byte array for the input, and we're going to take a byte array for the key that we're using in this operation. Now, we're also going to create an output array, and then we'll just return it after we've performed the operation. 
So we'll make a byte array for the output, which is going to equal a new byte array, which is the same size as our input. So we will specify input.length. And now let's go ahead and loop through every byte in the input. This is going to be real simple. For int i equals 0 while i is less than input dot length than i plus plus. And what are we doing? We're going to go ahead and access the index of the output that is equivalent to the index of the input. So we're working on the same byte and we're just going to convert it and store it in this section of the array. So output i will equal, if my keyboard will work, will equal, let's make sure that when we run the operation we don't get a float, but we get a byte. So we're going to get a byte from this value here. We're going to take our input at the same index of i, and we're going to use the up arrow key, which is basically the XOR symbol that we can use for the encryption. And let's specify the key. We're going to run this and just loop this through our key. So however long our key is, we're going to move through each one of the, the bytes inside of the key and run them against the bytes inside of the input. So we'll specify that by referencing whatever index we're working with and the percent symbol followed by the key dot length. So that'll make sure that we loop through our key, even as we reach the end, as we go past the index of the key going in the input of the file, uh, then we'll still just loop back to the beginning of the key and start it all over again. That's going to run for every single byte in the input. And once we're done, we can go ahead and return our output. And we have either the encrypted or the decrypted data. To encrypt, we're going to pass in the bytes in plain text and the key. And to decrypt, we're going to pass in the encrypted bytes and the key. Again, with XOR being symmetrical, we can use the same key and just pass in either encrypted or decrypted bytes and get the opposite as the result. So let's do that up here. Let's go ahead and say that byte array encrypted bytes is going to equal XOR. I need to make sure that's static again. That's something I always forget to do. So encrypted bytes equals XOR. And we'll take in our data bytes followed by our key bytes. And now we have the encrypted data. But maybe we'll only do that if we're actually going to encrypt it. So let's do that if we're encrypting. So if encrypt, if it's encrypting, then we're going to convert everything into the bytes and we're going to write it to the file. So we can say that file.write all bytes at the file path and pass in the encrypted bytes. Now, if we're not encrypting, then we'll go ahead and do the do what we were doing, just using the stream writer and passing in the plain text string. Now, if we're loading then what we can do is basically do the same thing, just decrypt the bytes. So let's go ahead and check. If encrypt, then we'll do a certain something. And if not, then we'll grab the JSON string from the plain text of the file and go ahead and return it, converting it to the that JSON uh, or to the actual data that was saved in the actual class, just like we were doing. However, if we're encrypting, then we need to get the bytes, which is the encrypted data. We're going to read it straight from our encrypted file and assume that it is already encrypted. So it'll be file read all bytes from the file path, and we will have our encrypted data. Now let's also say the byte array decrypted data, or you could use the same array, but I'm going to use two different ones here. We're going to use XOR encode, and we're going to decrypt the data. So we'll take the encrypted data, and we'll pass in the key, which actually, I'll go ahead and grab the key here so that we, we get our key bytes, as well as our encrypted bytes, which, let me rename that. So we pass in our encrypted bytes and our key bytes, and we will get the decrypted data. At that point, we need to turn these bytes back into the original JSON string that was saved. So 
let's go ahead and say that string decrypted string equals encoding dot utf8 again dot get string and we're going to get it from our decrypted data i'd like to be consistent and call that decrypted bytes and once we have that then we can go ahead and return the json utility conversion from the decrypted string and there we go we should be able to save and load encrypted files now so in the vn game save script let's find the save function and let's make sure that we set encrypt to what we have set for the class which is our constant up above that was initially false i'm going to make sure that that is true now now our load function is actually a function that applies this to the state so i'm going to rename this to um what should i call that if we're applying this save file back to the screen because i do want a load function that will take a file path i think i'm going to call this i think i'm just going to call this activate okay so that's our activate script that will reapply it to the screen and then to load a file i'm going to make a static function that will do that for us so public static vn game save load. So we're going to be taking the file path for the game save. So string file path is going to be passed into this function, which we will use to return a vn game save and set that as the active one in the scene. I may also throw in a boolean called activate on load and set that to maybe I'll set that to now I'll make it false off the bat and we'll go ahead and get our game save being game save save equals file manager dot load and let's load a being game save from the file path and let's specify that encrypt is equal to whether we are encrypting for this data type or not now once we have that we'll go ahead and say that active file equals save and if activate on load then save dot activate and then we'll go ahead and return the save so if we come back to our game save testing script being game save is fine the way it is we're going to save the file as is to its original file location uh, but in this case, we can go ahead and say that v in game save, uh, we'll call it save equals v in game save dot load. And we're going to load in the path that we were using right here. I am going to go ahead and say activate on load is true. So that way it will apply immediately after I load it. And that's all I need to do. So actually, I don't even need to store that in a variable right now because we're going to load it and we're going to activate it. And this should show us encrypted and decrypted working. So again, this is what our file looks like before we have encrypted. Everything is in plain text and we could come in and change it to anything that we want. So if I come into the game and I press the save key, we'll see that we did get the message save data to file, only it should be encrypted this time. As we look at it in the project view, it doesn't appear different, but let's open it up. And now we can see that it is definitely different. What we have here is encrypted data. That's where all these symbols and numbers are coming from. It may look like garbage and just plain gibberish, but it's actually a cleverly stored, secured file. And let's go ahead and try to load this and get it back in its original data format. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and stop the game. And I'm going to restart it and press the load key. And I should resume right back where I left off. So let me hit L. Oh, actually, testing. I need to make sure that that is game save testing is active. And then L. There we go. There's a lot more to cover, so we should keep going. Yeah, and it looks pretty good. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the save to be visible here. That way we can see it reload. So let me go ahead and come in here, public vn game save save, and then 
save will equal the in game save dot load. Okay, and let me go ahead and hit the L key. There we go. Okay, so I have player name DA and active conversations. We've got our conversations, active state. Our character Stella is up there with all of her information. Everything is just the way it was. Audio, yep, our music is running and our background is showing up. Panel background with layer zero as the shrine hallway and the history logs. We've got our logs in here and that is pretty good. Looks like everything is working. Vian marrying character name was set up. Okay, yeah, so it has encrypted and decrypted our save file. The best part is now you can't go in there and edit it without seriously corrupting something. Which brings me to my next point. If someone did change this value or did mess something up, you don't want that to crash your game. You want to catch that and you want to throw a warning and do something else if the file is corrupted. Now, we're in a testing script right now, so we're not going to implement complete error checking right now. We'll do that from the save and load menu, but I will give a brief overview on how we could do that. Let's say I decided to change something in here. I'm going to go ahead and change this one little section here. I'm going to change this right here to understand. I don't know what this belongs to and what that's going to mess up but we'll see what happens. Okay, and as I try to load, you'll see I get a JSON parse error because the data was incomplete and something got messed up. So just in case something like that happens, what we can do is we can implement your basic try and catch block. We could try to get the save file, and if it doesn't work, we can catch the system.exception as E, and then go ahead and do something. Debug.log error. Do something because we found an error. This could be throwing an error on screen, or it could just be you doing something else, like completely else logical because you've encountered the error and you don't want it to crash the game. So you can have your own methods for that. And now you can see we instead went to this line where we could run our own logic and make it safe in case the data being loaded is corrupted. That's something you always want to implement when there's chance for user error. But with that, we have finished. Our save and load system is ready to be integrated into a save and load menu, and we'll get into that in the next and we'll get into that in the next episode when we configure our main menu and configuration panels. See you then. Thank you.